All right, welcome back to Big Boy. It's Kev here. Just got back from Donkey Kong or Swole Con, as it is uh, sometimes referred to by the insiders uh, and those that uh, <clears throat> want to be difficult, i.e. myself. So uh, St. Louis, uh, Mitch Land runs this uh, con. It's a sort of a function of the Advanced After Combat Guild and podcast chaps who are all fine, upstanding young men. Well, at least 98% of them are anyway. And so I was at this con and I got to play Next War Iran. Uh, we were going to play Deadly Northern Lights, but things got complicated, lost a couple of players. And I think there were some issues with the uh, rules that uh, the folks who were going to play weren't necessarily excited about. So we, we rather, we sort of pivoted to this. And I'm kind of glad we did because we had a very interesting interesting time. Whenever you're playing a game with Ralph uh, Shelton, it's uh, always an exercise in watching his prodigious brain recall rules verbatim, A, B, uh, min-max the hell out of everything in a uh, fun way. And uh, and also give you great uh, advice on options because he's played the game so much now, given that he's the lead developer on it, that we uh, we we got into a, a nice rhythm once I stopped fighting the system, which we'll we'll get into in a little bit. So I've got a, I've got oh, there's nearly a hundred photographs in here, so we're not going to go through all of them probably. And I've also got the Vassal module up in the background. Suffice to say that I wasn't very happy with my performance with the game and took it took me a while to grok the situation and and how the, the rules are slightly different and how they apply to how you take advantage of the system to do what you need to do is a little bit different in the Gulf uh, just because of the, the close nature of the combat uh, the CVs are in the straits and stuff can get kind of funky. So you have to you have to play slightly differently than you might normally. And NATO is is a little bit, I want to say NATO, the US uh, and some of its allies are a little bit on the back foot uh, at the start. And it, they, it, it's it important for them to not rush in to the meat grinder. <laughs> and I said that at the very beginning, and I thought waiting three or four turns, three turns, I think it was, was enough. And I'm not going to go, you know, spoiling the whole scenario for you and all the rest of it. But uh, suffice to say that it wasn't enough. So let's have a look at the game and the game play uh, from, from this perspective. And I'll try and talk through some of these pictures and, and look at the stuff on the map and, and share some comments about it. Uh, we played the tactical surprise scenario as you may well be aware with the next war series uh for for iran in particular uh there's obviously a, a victory point bidding system where if you want as you can see on screen here the brits to come in uh you can have them come in in one of four levels and each of those levels will give you a a certain penalty for taking them on and so i chose i believe level three for the british because i wanted the special forces their air and some of their infantry uh, but I didn't want to bring in all the C CVs and amphibious bits and pieces. Uh, the French I chose just for the SF, which at the bottom of the screen, the 667 there, they're, they're representing the SF. Now, keep in mind, this is a playtest kit, and we were kind of kit bashing things together to bring all the forces to bear that we needed. So the, whenever you see a skull and crossbones on the map, it's not the special cyber war rules. It's the... It's the French Special Forces. Uh, let's see. And so then I also had to purchase or attempt to purchase the loyalties of the Qataris, the Omanis, and the Saudis. And the number of VPs you pay will give you a certain number of DRMs. So if you want to be 100% certain, you're going to have to spend some points to secure those, uh, those uh, access to airfields or the their complete loyalty, i.e. commitment level four, and use their forces and all this sort of stuff. So net of all that out for the for the US, uh, we spent a lot of points. The Russians, the Russians, the Iranians, 
decided that they would go all in with uh, PRC. I think they went level three with them and they elected to purchase not one, not two, but three uh, truck born or technical born IED, not IEDs, uh, nuclear warheads. Uh, they didn't take the, what do you call it? They didn't take the uh, missile delivered nukes. They were super expensive. Um, and then you'll see that uh, that that was probably a good thing uh, as we as we get into this. And I'm going to pause here for a second. <clears throat> 